Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our discussion about our pulmonology playlist. Please watch these videos in order. Inorganic interstitial lung disease is today's topic. We'll talk about coal workers' pneumoconiosis, silicosis, and berylliosis. With that being said, now let's get started. Lung diseases are obstructive or restrictive. A patient with a pulmonology problem is going to complain of cough and this may have five possibilities. Obstructive lung disease, restrictive lung disease, pulmonary vascular abnormality, infection, or malignancy. Today's topic is restrictive lung disease, especially the parenchymals. Restrictive lung disease have some stuff in common. You cannot get the air in. Decrease all lung volumes and capacities. FEV1, FBC ratio, normal or increase. Severity is determined by TLC. The lower the TLC, the more severe. Two types. Extrinsic, it's not the lung's fault. Intrinsic, it is the lung's fault. Such as cold workers' pneumoconiosis, silicosis, berylliosis, asbestosis, etc. Here is the most important table to understand restrictive lung disease. They are divided into extrinsic, which is not the lung's fault, and intrinsic, which is the lung's fault. Intrinsic has two main subtypes. Diffuse parenchymal, which means it's in the interstitial space, or it could be in the alveoli. When we talk about intrinsic diffuse parenchymal, we have three subtypes. Occupational and environmental, idiopathic, interstitial, and others. Today's topic is inorganic dust-induced interstitial lung disease, which is part of the occupational and environmental, such as cold worker pneumoconiosis, asbestosis, silicosis, berylliosis. Cold worker pneumoconiosis, what's the definition? You inhale coal dust, they go to the lung, they cause problems. Source of coal dust, coal mines, really? Tobacco smoke, wow. Pulmonary anthracosis, black anthracotic pigment, and this is not anthrax, please, please do not ever forget that. You'll find interstitial tissue of the lung inflamed, and it will involve the hilar lymph nodes. Alveolar macrophages plus anthracotic pigments within them. So here is the macrophage and here is some anthracotic dust and this is called dust cell. So dust cell is a macrophage. When it has dust, we call it anthracotic pigment inside of it. Usually asymptomatic pulmonary anthracosis is not anthrax. Cold workers pneumoconiosis and occupational lung disease, we have two main subtypes, simple and complicated. Which one is more severe? Of course, the complicated. It's just like the name has the answer. Okay, is the size of the fibrotic opacity less than one? Here, between one to two, or more than one, or more than two, something like that, without hilar involvement. And this is different from sarcoidosis because sarcoidosis has hilar involvement. Location of the opacity, upper lobes and upper portion of the lower lobes. Here it's the lung apex. So this can confuse some doctors with secondary tuberculosis. Relation to the amount of exposure. The greater the amount, the greater the progression of the disease. But the complicated one has no correlation with the amount of the exposure. Complications here, emphysema, which is an obstructive lung disease. Here you have massive progressive pulmonary fibrosis, which is restrictive. Poor pulmonary, and this eventually can lead to right ventricular hypertrophy and right heart failure. Increased risk of carcinoma, lung cancer, bladder cancer, colon cancer. There is no increased risk of tuberculosis, and this is different from silicosis because silicosis has increased risk of TB. No treatment available for the complicated coal worker pneumoconiosis. Kaplan syndrome, no association in simple. There is association with the complicated. Kaplan syndrome is a triad of complicated coal worker pneumoconiosis plus rheumatoid nodules in the lungs, plus rheumatoid arthritis. Next, silicosis. Again, it's osis, so it's restricted lung disease. You inhale silica, which is quartz, which is rocks, into your lungs. Agent is quartz, crystalline, silicon dioxide, or SiO2. Sources of silicon dioxide, by the way, silicon is like the sand. And then we make lots of stuff from sand. Metal casting, or why don't, why, why, how do you pronounce this? Foundries? Stone cutting, sandblasting, mining, querying, it came from the word quartz. Glass and cement manufacturing. The pathophys, quartz, inhalation, fibrogenic, especially in the upper lung, do not confuse this with complicated cold worker pneumoconiosis or secondary tuberculosis. Quartz activates alveolar macrophage, leading to release of cytokine, leading to fibrogenesis. Lung fibrosis, if it's caused by silicosis, happens in dose-response fashion after many years of exposure. The greater your exposure, the greater the problem. Types. You have simple, complicated, and silicoproteinosis. Sample. They have small lung nodules are fibrocalcific. Complicated, you have big nodules, they coalesce, leading to progressive massive fibrosis or PMF. Silicoproteinosis, you have overwhelming exposure, like 
exposure to tons of silicon for five years give it like give it time will lead to eosinophilic material filling the alveoli and many doctors unfortunately will confuse this with pulmonary edema because they have the same flipping symptoms silicosis clinically coffin dyspnea no kidding it's a lung disease complications progressive massive fibrosis and they get bigger and they coalesce core pulmonary lung fibrosis the right heart cannot easily pump blood against this increased fibrous tissue and fibrosis leading to pulmonary artery hypertension right ventricular hypertrophy and then right-sided heart failure and this will lead to three things jugular venous distension veins above veins in your ankle so ankle edema and veins in the liver liver distension kaplan syndrome is a triad of complicated cold worker pneumoconiosis rheumatoid nodules and rheumatoid arthritis there is increased risk of tuberculosis and there is increased risk of lung cancer silica is a carcinogen so whenever you see a politician or a scientist on tv hey vote for me or donate money for me and i will eradicate cancer um how come silica is everywhere it's sand it's in quartz are you gonna get rid of all the rocks from the face of the planet get your head out of your sphincter Diagnosis of silicosis clinically, chest x-ray, acute exposure, you find ground glass. Again, we will repeat this phrase bazillion times in restrictive lung disease. Chronic exposure will lead to nodules showing concentric layer of collagen with or without central cavitation. Actual calcification, you know why? Because these are rocks. You'll find rocks in your hilar lymph nodes. Egg shell calcification. The outer rim has dystrophic calcification, so this is the lymph node, and the outer rim is calcified and the lymph node is here. So this is like an egg shell. Here is the shell. And the egg yolk is in the middle. Those pathologists were hungry, man. High resolution CT will show something called crazy paving. How to manage silicosis. First of all, fibrosis is irreversible. I don't care about any online bloggers right now. Prevention. How to prevent silicosis. You prevent the onset. How do you avoid the exposure? Easy. Prevent the progression by something called whole lung lavage provides symptomatic relief and it might slow the progression of fibrosis but once the fibrosis happen you cannot go back or you can use anti-fibrin or fibrotic therapy again this decreases the progression but once there is fibrosis it's irreversible steroids may help in acute silicosis but it's useless in chronic disease and in general, we do not use oral steroids chronically because they have bazillion side effects. Lung transplant is last resort. Next, we have berylliosis, chronic beryllium disease or CBD. Definition, it's a lung disease associated with inhalation of beryllium. Agent here is beryllium. It's a metal. In the periodic table, it's BE. It has a tensile strength, lightweight, stronger than steel, yet lighter than aluminum. This sounds like an ad. It has good electrical conductivity and it can quench electrons and it's useful in nuclear reactors. By the way, I have a brilliant video about this beryliosis and it's in my playlist called Medical Jokes. And I have a joke about my brilliant son. He's brilliant because he was exposed to beryliosis. Go figure. Sources of beryllium. Aerospace industry, NASA, dentistry, metal alloys, fluorescent light bulb manufactured before 1950. Pathogenesis, cell-mediated or type 4 hypersensitivity reaction, this is the T lymphocyte. Berylliosis will lead to chronic interstitial pneumonia, especially in the upper lobe. Okay, contrast that with asbestosis, as we will discuss in the next video. Asbestosis causes lung fibrosis in the lower lobe. Do you still remember silicosis? Yes, silicosis is also upper lobe. So silicosis and beryliosis, upper lobe, asbestosis, lower lobe. How do I remember it? Okay, we use silica because silica is in the sand. The sand is on the floor. It causes upper lobe problems. The asbestos is the opposite. We use it for roofing. So it's in the roof. It's up there. When it goes to the lung, it goes to the lower lobe. This is the mnemonic of opposites. Clinically, again, it's a freaking respiratory disease, cough and dyspnea. You can add anything else. How to diagnose beryliosis? Clinically, you need a history of beryllium exposure, so a dentist or a guy or a gal who works for NASA. They are brilliant, but everything in life has pros and cons. Chest X-ray or CT scan will show nodules along septal lines, and this is similar to sarcoidosis. 
Beryllium lymphocyte proliferation test. You can do this test to diagnose it. Fiber optic bronchoscopy with transbronchial biopsy will show interstitial cell infiltrate. This is mononuclear cell because this is a freaking type for hypersensitivity reaction. And of course, a non-caseating granuloma, as you know. And of course, sarcoid is also going to have non-caseating granuloma. What are the complications of viroliosis, acute pneumonitis, pulmonary fibrosis, chronic granulomatous disease leading to non-caseating granuloma, core pulmonary because any disease that leads to lung fibrosis, the right heart is struggling to pump blood against this fibrosed lung, leading to pulmonary artery hypertension, right ventricular hypertrophy, right sided heart failure, and right solid heart failure has three main signs and symptoms. Number one, you have jugular venous distension. Number two, you have ankle edema. Number three, you have liver distension due to the distension of the capsules liver of Gleason. No increased risk of TB. And this is different from silicosis because silicosis does have an increased risk of tuberculosis. But there is increased risk of lung cancer with viroliosis. Sorry, brilliant people. Everything in life has pros and cons. How to manage beryliosis? Unlike cold worker pneumoconiosis or silicosis, beryliosis is actually treatable. Good news for you, brilliant people. Steroids is the number one or number one uh, choice. And then if it fails, use methotrexate. Methotrexate is an interesting drug. Why? Because at low dose, you can use it for rheumatological diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis, and you can use it for beryliosis. At high doses, it's a freaking chemotherapy for cancer. Wow. So when you have a patient with rheumatoid or berylliosis and you tell them I'm gonna start methotrexate, they will freak out. Is, th is this the same drug that we use for cancer? Yes, but chill your butt down. It's a lower dose. My favorite part of the lecture, clinical pros. Cold worker pneumoconiosis has no increased risk of tuberculosis. Silicosis, on the other hand, there is an increased risk of tuberculosis and or lung cancer. How about berylliosis? With berylliosis, there is no increased risk of TB but there is increased risk of cancer. Silicosis is the most common occupational disease in the whole freaking world. There is a lot of sand and rocks out there, man. So everything in life has pros and cons, even silicon dioxide. The mnemonic of opposite, as you know, asbestos is used for roofing, so it goes to the lower lobes. Silica is the opposite. Silica is in the sand, so it affects the upper lobes of the lung. Risk factors for active TB in people who have been infected with TB bacilli. Oh, right. Risk factors for active tuberculosis. Recent infection, fibrotic lesions, tobacco smoking, malnutrition, comorbidities, and the atrogenic cause such as HIV, silicosis, diabetes, etc. So silicosis can increase your risk of TB activation. Diseases that affect the upper lung, secondary TB, klebsiella pneumonia, in an old person who is diabetic, alcoholic, and lives in a senior home. Aspiration while lying flat on bed, silicosis, beryliosis, cold worker pneumoconiosis, histoplasmosis, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, aspergilloma, bronchiectasis caused by cystic fibrosis, squamous muscle carcinoma, pan esner emphysema due to alpha-1 and trypsin deficiency. Very important for any exam. Does this disease involve the hilum? The hilum is an entry to any organ or an exit. It depends on how you look at it. So when your bronchi are entering the lung, this is called the hilum. Cold worker pneumoconiosis has no hilar involvement. Silicosis does have hilar involvement. Describe it. Egg shell calcification of hilar lymph nodes. These are rocks, man. Of course, it's going to be egg shell calcification. Sarcoidosis, yep, there is hilar involvement, and it's bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy, usually in a female. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and join the tribe. Hit the bell to get notified and smash like. Follow me on Facebook. I have more than 100 cases there. You can get my premium videos, my cases, my post notes, my PDFs, even the slides of these videos organized in Dropbox folders. Go to patreon.com slash medicosis. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionals, where medicine makes perfect sense.